Hey everyone, in this video, we'll be talking about how to compare fractions, decimals, and percentages. In previous videos, I've talked about how percents, fractions, and decimals all represent parts of a whole. For example, let's say that we had one big piece of a pie, and we wanted to divide that pie up into four different slices. Well, if I took one of these pie slices, I can say that I have taken one out of the four slices. But I can also use decimals and percentages to represent that exact same ratio. For in fact, if I were to divide one by four, I would get the number 0 0.25. And likewise, if I multiply that decimal by 100, that would give me 25%. These are all different ways of expressing the same quantity. We often use fractions or ratios to compare different quantities. Sometimes they're the same groups and sometimes they're different groups. But then when we come to decimals and percentages, we can use those numbers all the time to express kind of uh, comparisons or quantities where one group makes up a part of the greater group. As you do more math, you'll learn how to use these ratios in order to compare groups of numbers more effectively. But you do need to understand that there's a relationship between all of these things between your fractions, your decimals, and your percentages. In fact, when it comes to uh, fractions and decimals, as I did before, we can just divide. And when it comes to percentages and decimals, we can just multiply by 100. Let's take a closer look at that. Here, I have another fraction. 1 over 5, or 1 fifth. If I were to do 1 divided by 5, and one thing that will help you out in math is to always remember that this fraction bar can also be interpreted as a division symbol. So another way of writing that is 1 divided by 5. But anyways, if I divide my 1 by 5, well, obviously, I can't go into 1 because 5 is a greater number than 1, so I'm going to need to add a decimal. Once I add that decimal, I can now look at the 10 because I'm looking at the 1 and the 0, and 5 goes into 10 two times. So I can see that that's 0 remainder. So this is the decimal 0 0.2, or I could extend that and add as many zeros as I want. Remember that with decimals, adding zeros after the very last number doesn't really change the value. But for our purposes here, I'm going to leave just one of those zeros because I specifically want to go to the hundredths place. Remember that the first digit before the decimal is the unit or the ones place. The second one is the tenths place, the first digit after the decimal, and the second is the hundredths place. The reason I want to go to the hundredths place this time is to show you the relationship between the decimals and the percentages. So if we look at this, I have 0 0.20. If I multiply that number by 100, that's going to give me the number 20%. In fact, this is the case with any sort of decimal and percentage, that if I look at it and say had a number like 13, I could represent 13% as 0.13. Likewise, I could represent a number like 60% as 0 0.60 or 0 0.6, because remember that since the decimal 
just has a zero after it, or that uh, in this case, the 0 0.20 has a zero after the two, 0 0.2 is the exact same thing as 0 0.20. A lot of people get confused by that and think that 0 0.2 would be 2%. But remember to always go out to the hundredths place and that's the number you're going to take. Or take your decimal and multiply by the number 100 in order to figure out which of these numbers you'll actually have as a percentage. So last, let's take a look at some of the common fractions or ratios that you need to know for all of your fractions, decimals, and percentages. These obviously won't be the only types of ratios that you will see while you're doing math, but these will be some of the most common ones that will pop up in your math problems. These include one, because we always need to know how we represent one whole, one half, one third, one fourth, one fifth, one eighth, one tenth, and then let's also go ahead and add one twentieth and one out of one hundred. I'll need to extend my chart a little bit. So one, when we're looking at fractions, decimals, and percentages, that always represents one entire whole. So one represents the entire amount that we start with or that we have in a given quantity. For a decimal, we write that as one as well, or we could say 1.0. And then if we multiply 1.0 by 100, we get 100%. Note that if we take a number that's bigger than one, then that means that we have more than whatever we started in started with. So for example, let's extend our chart again uh, up here and let's add the number two. Well, two as a decimal would be 2.0, but as a percent, that would be 200%, meaning that we have more than we ever started with. But we'll talk about that a little bit more in another video. Continuing, one half, is the same as 0 0.5. And if we multiply that, we get 50%. Remember, we're always multiplying our decimals by 100. One third will give me a repeating decimal. So that gives me 0 0.33 repeating. So 0 0.33, that gives me 33.3 percent. And it's always important not to confuse one third with three tenths. Because remember that one third always has those threes repeating, whereas three out of 10 is really 0 0.30. And will give me 30%, not 33%. And that can lead to some mistakes in your math. One fourth is 0 0.25. That's 25% if I multiply by 100. One fifth is 0 0.20 or 20%. One eighth, we sometimes will see this too when they're looking for easy numbers for you to work with, but still something different than the usual one half or one fourth or one fifth. So one eighth, you'll notice is one half of one fourth. So that is 0 0.125. That's 12.5%. One tenth is 0 0.1 or 10%. One twentieth is half of 
So that's 0 0.05, or 5%. And then, of course, 1 out of 100 is 0 0.01, or 1%. As you do more math, you'll learn to see some of the comparisons and the relationships between each of this num these numbers. Keep practicing, not only with these numbers here, but try your hand at dividing other fractions, odd ones like three out of seven or two fifths or like the three tenths that I gave you. As you practice this more and more, you'll understand how you can easily convert between your fractions, decimals, and percentages and vice versa. Remember that to go from a fraction to a decimal, we're just going to divide. To go from a decimal to a percent, we're going to multiply by 100. And same can be done the other way. If I want to go from a percentage to a decimal, then I would just divide by 100. And if I wanted to go from a decimal to a fraction, I could take that decimal, like let's say 0 0.23, and look at its decimal place. In this place, it goes out to the hundredths. So that means that I'm going to take that 23 and put it over the number 100. So as you practice this more and more, you'll begin to understand how each of these works and how you can apply it to greater problems that you'll encounter in the future. Keep an eye out for the other videos where I will talk more in depth about how to use these fractions, decimals, and percents to level up your math skills. Stay tuned.